Hi and welcome. I'm Zoe Penny Baker Breen, and you're watching WVVH TV. And you won't want to miss what we have for you. We have brought you to the hottest event in the Hamptons. I'm so excited to be here. This is the Academy Culinary Academy Awards, if you will. This is the James Beard Foundation's Chef and Champagne event, and it's really wonderful because they're honoring the owners, the co-owners of the Four Seasons restaurants. So let's go in. I know there's some fabulous champagne every and some amazing chefs who have, are presenting us with some fabulous dishes. So come on, let's go fill our bellies and toast to some wonderful chefs. I'm here with Susan Ungaro, the president of the James Beard Foundation. Wonderful to have you here. I feel so lucky to be talking to you. You have a wonderful job, right? I have the best job in New York City, working with the greatest chefs and restaurateurs in America. Zoe, it's just a very exciting place to be, especially in these times with America's fascination and passion for food and the culinary arts. Well, tell me about the James Beard Foundation. How did it start? The James Beard Foundation is over 20 years old. Uh, the, it's, we're named for James Beard, who's considered the father of American cuisine. And all the chefs here tonight, all 30 of them who are, you know, basically cooking their hearts out for our cause, which is to celebrate culinary excellence, raise money for scholarships, and to honor tonight's honorees. Uh, two men that, you know, restaurateurs all over the world, but especially in New York, love. It's just very exciting to have them with us. Is. And what's the best aspect of your job? Well, first of all, we give out the Oscars of the food industry wow. for the best chefs, best restaurateurs, best cookbook authors, best television, radio shows. It's a very exciting opportunity to recognize excellence in the culinary arts across a broad spectrum. But I think I also, I love the fact that we get to, you know, I get to work with chefs in the townhouse in the village, James Beard's former home. We do about 200 fundraising dinners a year with wow. chefs all over the country coming to perform their best five seven course menu with unbelievable wine tastings and that money helps raise money for scholarships and other educational programs. Now, do you have a favorite dish that you enjoy at the Four Seasons restaurant? Well I was just there the other day and I have to tell you the crab cakes and uh, are you know are, are were a signature and you may not know this but uh, the Four Seasons other very important star and friend of the foundation Christopher Alvin he was chef hitch passed away sadly just about a month and a half ago and one of our chefs tonight please make sure you visit him next to the Four Seasons station okay. with Chef Fred Moreau is Chef Waldy uh, Maloof and he's in honor of Christian he's making his crab cakes so you gotta taste them. Okay I will oh I'm so excited well thank you so much it's wonderful to be here are you excited to be here does this feel good? Oh uh, you know what so could nice. be nicer than to be working in a gorgeous vineyard under a big white tent champagne wine and incredible food I consider myself a very lucky girl. So I'm here with Fred Marrow from Four Seasons Restaurant, Restaurant in New York. Hello, Fred. Hi, Thanks. How are you? This is wonderful, isn't it? It's beautiful. What could beautiful be better. Oh. Oysters, <laughs> ceviche, champagne. Chefs, champagne. <laughs> I'm here. It's <laughs> great. So, Fred, tell me what you're serving we today. We just got rid of whole oysters from Mike. Mike. Mike just got them three hours ago from Greenpoint. Wow. He picked them up himself, and I got some beautiful East Coast fish, octopus, also. And I made ceviches. What made you decide to do s serve seafood today? I think today with champagne, you need a little oyster, you know, and fresh, fresh raw fish, you know, marinated. Very simple, very classical. So, do you have a favorite um, herb that you use with seafood a lot? Cilantro. That's your favorite. Cilantro. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Now, what inspires you to create new dishes? Oh, fresh products like Mike's. See, fresh. I've created this this beautiful sauce, which yeah. is apples, honey, and a little peppers, which go great with the oysters. You should try one; they're fantastic. I will. I will. Thank you so much. This is nice. Thanks so much for being here. This is so exciting, it's and very exciting. we're so excited to honor the Four Seasons Restaurant and uh, 50th anniversary. So that's great. Very yes. exciting. So you had? A, did you have a big party this year? Oh, we did. We did. We had about 1,300 close friends. Yes. <laughs> That's a lot of close friends. <laughs> and you cooked for it. Yeah, 25,000 hors d'oeuvres. Oh, my gosh. Well, you're, you must be very good at what you do because so many people... I got good help. Yes, yes. Without these guys, you can. Uh, guy who's been working for about 20 years. So, good Fred, thank you so much, and I look forward to trying some of this delicious Definitely seafood. Definitely have to okay. try it. Thank you. <laughs>
I'm here with Alex Von Bitter, one of the honored guests here at the Chefs in Champagne. Hello and welcome. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be out here. Great to All be here. All of our customers are here. Nobody's in the city today. Tell me about your role here. What is your role here tonight? Uh, Julian and I are here to celebrate our restaurant's 50th anniversary and to support all these chefs that came out to help the James Beard Foundation. I think it is about your restaurants that keep it so successful. Is there a what is it about the Four Seasons restaurant? Well, it's an amazing, amazing architectural landmark and uh, fabulous food, great wines. And Winning combination. And, you know, we've been there a long time taking care of a lot of friends. Well, mm -hmm. time. And in New York City, where restaurants come and go, 50 years is definitely. 50 years is pretty good, yes. Well, we hope for another 50. What's, the, what's your favorite aspect of owning a restaurant, or owning the Four Seasons restaurant? It's fun. You get to meet everybody in the world. And uh, so many people come to see us for the food, for the service, to see us, to have a good time, to celebrate. And you see everyone smiling, right? Yes. People come in, they're stressed out, they had a bad day, and you make them happy. We it's turn it around. Thing. You really do, it's amazing. Yes. Very gratifying. Mm -hmm. Same as you do right now. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me, are you having fun here tonight? So far it's been uh, a lot of talk and I a lot of photographs. Your, your I can't. champagne glass is not empty ever. No, it has not been empty at all. And I, I just hope to get some of the great food. I tasted our food, fabulous ceviche. We uh, met Fred. Product. We met Fred. met Fred. Oh, Fantastic. Wonderful. And I love the seafood he's prepared. It's just incredible and it looks delicious. Excellent. Excellent. So thank you so much well, for talking to me. This and is Sagaponic and the uh, James Beard Foundation. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much. So I'm here with Jill Heisler, the marketing director for Forbes magazine. Wow, this is fun. This is great. It's hot, but there are a lot of people out here. Everybody's having a wonderful time. If and your we're job just trying to stay hydrated. Yes, if your job takes you to places like this, you have a great job. It's not a bad job at all. I love it. <laughs> so who's next to you here? Who are we standing with? Well, we're here today as the uh, media sponsor of the event and also as the sponsor of the VIP after party with Gary Walther, our editor-in-chief of Forbes Life magazine. Wow. It's an honor to champagne drated. You have to stay champagne drated and, and lots of good food to go with it, right? How lucky. Yeah, so far the crab cake over there is fabulous. <laughs> and who else do we have? Richard Nally is our senior editor, our wine and spirits editor. He wrote the tasting notes for all of the champagnes that are being featured today. This is great. What does this mean to you, this kind of event? Forbes Life uh, is the lifestyle magazine of Forbes. We come out six times a year, and uh, we decided this year to partner with James Beard Foundation Chefs and Champagne because it's a great testament to the lifestyle that our readers enjoy. And you, do you enjoy eating food and cooking food? I sure do, and it's wonderful to see all these people coming out on a perfect summer night to enjoy wine and this beautiful food and all these uh, all these great chefs. Oh, I'm here with that. Julian Nicolini, the the other oh, half. Yeah, the other half. Okay. You are the reason for the Four Seasons success, restaurant oh, success. You really? and your partner. No, that's what he said. I think so. Oh, good. No, I'm glad. no, he's I the know. reason. He's the reason. <laughs> you just you just enjoy the food, right? And the <laughs> and to come events like I this. I just have a lot of fun. That's all. That's all I do. I don't. I don't have any other reason to be there. The only reason why I'm there all the time is to have a lot of fun. Yes. Like here, we're fun, having a lot you know? of fun here, of right? Of course. You never have your champagne glass empty, your belly's never empty, and you enjoy it? Even at the Four Seasons, the glass should never be empty. It should never be empty. What's never. the best aspect of what you do? Um, well, basically, is that uh, it's something that happens very naturally. You know, if you really love what you're doing, I think it's fine. If you don't love what you're doing, I don't... I think you should find a different job. Yeah, if you love what you're doing, it comes naturally. Yeah. I mean, you get up every day and you enjoy it, mm -hmm. right? Of course, you that's exactly it. what I do. Where are you from originally? I'm from Italy. Italy. So you have such a wonderful grasp of food and company and enjoyment, and you bring that to people in New York, and that's... I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, and congratulations. This is well, a wonderful honor, well, and I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Well, here. I think you should come over to the Four Seasons to see exactly what we do for a living. I love... I would love... That's a personal invitation. I'm coming. <laughs> you got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. I'm here with Waldy Malouf from The Beacon in New York City. Yes, thank Where you. Where is The Beacon? It's on 56th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Fantastic. And you? Celebrating our 10th anniversary. Wow, 10 years. That's yeah, great. Yeah, in New York yeah. City, in restaurants York City. come and go. Yeah, the, uh, 10 years we, we, we're there for a long time. We'll be there for another 10. What's the secret of your success, do you think? Unique food, unique ambiance, and great service. So tonight you have brought some fantastic crab cakes. They're famous, I understand. Well, they're famous. They're, they're Christian Albans, um, 
crab cakes who was the chef at the Four Seasons for the last 30 years. He, I worked with him under under him about 25 years ago in 19 in the 70s and late 70s. He, uh, this was one of his recipes. It's crab mixed with a little fresh ginger and then sautéed a great crab cake with a mustard sauce. We also used the Wolfer Vineyards Verjou in the mustard sauce. So we. And as an homage to him, he recently passed away, uh, and because they're honoring the Four Seasons and their 50th anniversary, we thought it would be appropriate and a nice thing to do to do his recipe in memory of him in a very happy, celebratory way. Did you learn a lot from him when you worked under him? Oh, quite a bit, quite a bit, quite do a bit. Yes. Do, you, do you use some of those skills that you learn in your restaurant? Actually, at Beacon, we do a crab cake version of this in our wood-burning oven. It's probably distilled through the years. I've used that recipe as a base from the, my, my 25 years of work working since then. That's a mustard sauce. And then Christian used to garnish it with beet chips. So we made some crispy beet chips that we garnished on top of it with and it's served with a mosh salad. This is the good part about doing what I do, right? <laughs> the James Beard Foundation on Hamptons TV. I'm here with Michael Rossi from Della Femina, the chef at Della Femina. Hi, Michael. Nice to see you. Hey, how are you? Nice what to a you. wonderful honor to be honored by the James Beard Foundation. Tell me, what does that mean, mean to you and Della Feminas? Well, it means a lot. You know, we, you know, James Beard Foundation stands, you know, stands up for chefs and does a lot for chefs in New York and all around the country. And uh, you know, especially for me, what's exciting is being a local chef and having it here in the Hamptons. We feel like we're in our own backyard, and uh, you know, it's it's just it feels like home. You know, we're really you know, a great turnout and wonderful weather as usual out here for this event. And we. We've done it about four or five times now, and and mostly you know that's that's what it is for me. I just love to come out, and it's just a really great cocktail party. A chance for me to get out of the kitchen, yeah. see some of our clients that dine with us on a regular basis. You really have a nice talk cool to them, get to know them. You have a nice cool yeah. breeze. You don't have that in the kitchen, right? No, you, you you really you really couldn't ask for a better day. It's 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 a special time for chefs because we are always kind of in the back of the house and behind the behind the lines, and you know the the the, the, the dining public doesn't really get a great opportunity to mingle with us and I think that they enjoy it just as much as we do I think it's exciting for you know both sides of the coin uh, to really get out and get to know one another and see what we're really all about what we're made of I'm here with Shanette Cohen hi Shanette hi how are you and your husband Brian Cohen hi how are you you are the executive director of the Hampton Classic a huge job, huge job. I have a good team of people working there too so it's not all team. me I have a great team. They're fantastic. And, and it's you're the mastermind, right? With the walkie talkie I try. Care. <laughs> I try. It's a great, great job, though, right? I absolutely love it. And yeah. it's soon. We're a month away, the 23rd through the 30th of August. So wow. it's coming coming up very soon. It always comes so quickly. It really does. And we're a week early this year. Normally, we go on Labor Day weekend. Wow. And this year, Labor Day is pretty late. So we're, we're early. Brian, do you lose your wife for a week <laughs> to the no. horse show? No, I'm at the horse show. I, I volunteer. I'm, I'm either helping out with the... Uh, their buses come in with the with the elder, elderly group, or uh, just running around, you know, as a catch-all, kind of helping people, whatever needs to be done. What do you think it is about the Hampton Classic that just has made it stay? I think it's the people, and I and I, I think it's just such a wonderful event. I mean, the first time I ever went, I did a, like a bookended weekends, and after that year, I said I have to be there for the whole show, and and you can't keep me away. It doesn't matter what's going on. I'm there, rain or shine. I'm here with Roman, the winemaker at Wolfer, a very important man. I just want to start off by saying on behalf of myself and WBVH, I'm deeply sorry about our loss, Christian Wolfer. We, he will be very missed. It and yeah, it's tough, even especially now in summer. He was such a joyful, yes. you know, enjoyed life. And so it's now, it even hurts more now in summer than when the shock happened. But so. he would be so proud about the way you, have, you carried on. Yeah, you know, I think. The, and Wolfer carried on. So. The, the, the kids are all committed to keep this jewel up and to make something special. And the whole, we have a great team. Yeah. 
and to to create great wines and to have you know be still hospitable, have friends, have people come by, is still the heart of Wolfer Estate, and it's I think it shows that and people enjoy it and people are proud of what we're doing. So Roman, tell me what's in your glass right now? Well, right now it's the Wolfer Rosé 2008, the last one probably. It's wow. it's going out fast. And, but we have, of course, great red wine. We have wonderful sparkling wines. And uh, Rosé took on a life of its own, didn't it? It's a monster. <laughs> it's just on the roll. And it's summer, of course. It's vibrant. It's elegant. It captures so well how, how our vineyards, how our wines can make wines that are elegant, that have esprit, that are, have finesse. And this is sort of the epitome of, of elegance and, 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 and summer. So How many years now has Wolfer Vineyards been open? Well, well wine. last year we celebrated our 20th anniversary, wow. so this year it's 21, and I'm getting blonder and blonder. <laughs> <laughs> Roman, thank you Thanks so much. It's always much. fun catching oh, up oh, with oh, you. Oops, I'm yeah. losing it. <laughs> Bye. Enjoy yourself here. Enjoy right. the wine and the food. <laughs> I'm here with Michael Musto. Hi, Michael. Hi. So I understand you come to this this event quite a bit. It's my second annual. Yeah. I mean, they lay out such a beautiful feast. It's so beautifully presented. It's a shame to eat it, but I do manage. Do you have a favorite? I, I've had a lot of octopusy things, which I like. They were delicious. <laughs> a lot of scallops, a lot of ceviche, watermelon soup, a lot of summery items. Do you cook? I can barely boil a noodle. I'm real, I'm just helpless. So you depend on chefs. I depend on takeout <laughs> chefs, people to entertain me, because I can't, otherwise I wouldn't survive. So do you come out here? Do you spend a lot of time in the Hamptons? I don't. It's so not me. I'm a fish out of water here. I, I'm you, you know I'm very low rent. <laughs> I, I love the city, and I, I don't get invited the much. The noise. <laughs> you can't sleep without the noise, right? I need the noise. And it's the takeout. Comforting. There's not a lot of takeout. The takeout, here. yeah. Unless you come somewhere like this, and then you can really get fed well. <laughs> well, this is why I come here once a year. <laughs> I eat for the year. I'm like a, a camel, just kind of <laughs> feeding off this for a year. So you have a book, I understand, coming out. It's, it's coming out in February, and appropriately enough, it's called Fork on the Left, Knife in the Back. But that's the way I behave. I'm very proper until you turn your back and then, eh. Oh, I love but, that. And it's kind of a collection of my columns from the Village Voice as well as some original material. Great. My last book was called La Dolce Musto. That was two years ago. Wow, how exciting. It's great. You know, publishing's dying, but I'm just going to keep doing it. <laughs> for you. What else are you going to do, right? I don't know You're anything not gonna else. Cook. <laughs> I can't drive a cab. I, I have no skills. I certainly yeah, I can't cook. I'm here to say you do have skills because I've read some of your works. So you're very, Thank you. Very skilled the way you do with the pen. I'm here with Jennifer McCoy, the pastry chef from Avoce. Yes. Now tell me what you prepared here today. Um, we have a torta de mais, which is a polenta cake with cornmeal in it, uh, whipped creme fraiche, grilled peaches, and toasted hazelnuts. So creative. So people don't usually think of polenta being in a dessert. But no, not usually. But in Italian cuisine, it's actually it pretty is. common. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to trying it. Yes, please do. And what kind of dessert wine do you think it would go with this dessert? Um, you know, I think something light and refreshing, a glass of Prosecco, or maybe a Gewürztraminer. Oh, champagne. Yeah, champagne. <laughs> You know, sounds good to me. The season, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Sure. Here with Missy Robbins, executive chef from Avoce. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we kind of went backwards. We we met with your pastry chef and had dessert first. What are you serving here? I'm serving a ricotta sformato. It's like a ricotta mousse. It's got a little zucchini salad on top with mint, chives, uh, a little extra virgin olive oil, sea salt. Very simple. Are you having fun? I'm having a great time. How can you not have fun? I know. Beats being at the restaurant. Where's something. your champagne? Do you get to have champagne? It's right over there. Don't worry. Don't worry. I've had plenty. Don't worry. These guys, that's what they that's what they do. They they keep me satiated. What made you choose this dish to, to serve tonight? It's light, it's kind of summery. I wanted to kind of highlight a summer ingredient, which is a zucchini. Um, and it's a good event dish, very easy to plate and um, not too complicated and just simple. You love what you do, Missy? I do. I Doesn't tell. it show? It Come on. Does. Thank you so much. You're I look welcome. forward to trying. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God! Look at the tummy. I <laughs> got <guy's> smiling. <laughs> I'm here with David Blum from Dial a Dinner. Hello. Thank you very Tell much. Me, what's Dial a Dinner? What we do is we take food from great restaurants in the Hamptons, mm -hmm. like Nick and Tony's, like Bobby Van's, uh, wonderful steaks and lobsters from the Palm, and we deliver within the hour from great restaurants in New York City and the Hamptons. 
Uh, we also have a wonderful division called Jet Dining, where we outfit private jets with food from the Palm and from Le Cirque and actually fly people out here to reservations they can't get in the Hamptons. My brother is the president and chairman of David Yerman, Paul, Paul Blum, and we also do great events where we do catering from these great restaurants whereby we do the staffing, we have the delivery people, planning, all elements of your dial a dinner or jet dining experience. And we've been doing this for over 20 years out here in the Hamptons. So how does somebody find out about Dial a Dinner or contact you? You just simply dial a dinner and you simply call us. And within less than an hour, we have the food from your favorite restaurant brought right to your home or office or cater your, your very special event. Tonight, we have a very special moment. Um, all of you were here at this beautiful Wolfer estate, and I'd like to ask um, Andrea Wolfer and someone else special to come up here on stage. You know, for over 10 years, the legendary winemaker Christian Wolfer was a great friend of the foundation, sponsoring and ho helping us host this great event here. His son Mark is with us tonight and his daughter, Andrea Wolfer. And I'd like to introduce her because for four years now, we've been giving a very special uh, scholarship in Christian Wolfer's name. For those of you uh, who knew this wonderful man, he died in a very tragic boat in an accident this past year, and we all miss him very much, but we really will, his legacy will live on in so many ways, and one of the ways is in a scholarship that his daughter is going to present tonight. So if I could have a few minutes of your attention, I want to welcome Andrea Wolfer. Please help me welcome Andrea. Thank you all. Not born taller. Anyways, guess who I'm going to talk about now? Blue eyes like everlasting blue skies. Thank God it's blue skies today. The deepest urge to extend the largest joy for life, which was never give up, given up for any profound and rigorous business deal. The ongoing drive to convert every moment into life distinct experience. The generosity of pounding oversized heart which was filled with an incredible determination, endless positivism, and a constant overflowing hospitality. When walking up here through the vineyard to come to this tent, he took my hand. His hand was shaking. And he pressed it and turned to him and looked and asked him. I said, Dad, why are you so nervous? He paused for a second and replied, I believe I've never been nervous in this sort of occasion. But this event means the world to me because I finally believe that I found people who share the same compassion as I do, combining the best food and drinks and consequently creating a life experience out of it. Therefore, he would have been especially proud to make this presentation today. Thus, I'm deeply honored to stand here for our family in his name and would like to announce this year's Christian Wolfer Scholarship recipient, Miss Christina Kassel. Christina Castle, recipient of uh, an honor this evening yes. from uh, Christian Wolfer's daughter. Yeah. 
and a, and a person who comes from East Hampton. This yeah. is a great event for you, <laughs> yes. isn't it? Yeah, it was great. I'm so honored. I want to thank the Wolf for Day and the James Beard Foundation. I really appreciate winning the scholarship. When did you know that this was the profession for you? Uh, probably middle school. Yeah, eighth grade. We had to sign up for high school classes, and right away I knew I wanted to be in the culinary classes. And an event like this, the James Beard Foundation, what does this mean to you to be part of this event? Oh, it's great. There's so much great food and so much to drink, and it's a great time with everyone. For those people who are young like yourself coming into this business, the James Beard Foundation, uh, what does that mean as, in terms of, of, of someone who's, this is going to be your career and your future? Uh, it's a great foundation. They do so much for young kids like me, and they do so much others for chefs, and yeah, it's great. So what is the future for you? What, what will we be hearing about, Christine, uh, in the years to come? Well, I'm doing two years of baking and pastry, and then I'll do two years of culinary, and I'll get my master's in teaching. Yes. <laughs> Masters of so of all the dishes that you make, of all the things that you bake, what's yes. your favorite? Apple pie. Oh, apple pie. <laughs> apple pie. Well, I wouldn't expect anything <laughs> else from one of our hometown favorites. Yeah. Congratulations, Thank Christine. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, 50 years ago, James Beard consulted on the Four Seasons menu, and his idea was really quite revolutionary back then, a menu that changed with the seasons. And then for years, Julian and Alex really have been the charismatic, charismatic leaders behind this wonderful landmark restaurant in New York. So many people talk about it being the most beautiful restaurant in New York, but it's also run by some of the most beautiful people. And I want to just take this moment, because I think it's really important, many of you may not know this, and many of you do, that you know, Julian and Alex are considered the masters of hospitality in New York City. But they had a wonderful chef. Congratulations. But they had a wonderful chef that worked at the restaurant for 30 years and for many years under their leadership. Uh, everybody who knew and loved him called him Chef Hitch, Christian Albin. And we just want to toast his memory tonight because he was a very special member of this incredible culinary community and all the chefs here tonight, especially Fred Murrow and his staff and all the chefs at the Four Seasons, I know that they really miss him and we just need to take a moment to toast to Christian and many other great chefs in New York, their competitors are great admirers. I was at their roast for the 50th anniversary and it was just a who's who of great chefs in New York. Uh, celebrating their leadership. But what makes tonight's honorees really special as well is that they're very generous people. They support City Meals on Wheels, the Food Allergy Initiative, but most of all, they have been great friends of the James Beard Foundation for many years, even before my time. And we really want to thank you because we've had many very successful fundraisers at your restaurant. And there will be another one on November 11th, and we hope you all come to it. It's, there's information in your program tonight. But I really just want to toast them for their leadership, their generosity, and their friendship. And thank you very much for helping us celebrate tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for all of you to being here today. It's a tremendous opportunity for us to enjoy ourselves, enjoy your tremendous food, enjoy your tremendous hospitality. And believe it or not, James, James Beer was right. If there is a will, there is a way. And there is a way in America to make better food, better hospitality, and every, everything that you can ever imagine. So cheers to all of you. Thank you. Thank you to all the chefs who came out here to support the foundation. Very, very much appreciated. It's fun to be a guest. Thank you. So thank you for joining me here on WVVH TV. I'm Zoe Pennybaker, and you won't want to miss what's coming up next right here. Bye-bye.